All right, cool. What's up? Not much, man. It's been a while. Well, I guess relatively, but because a lot of stuff has happened, but it ain't really been that long. Yeah, the other yeah. side. <laughs> the other, the other side of things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been a minute getting back in the like. So how? Wait, because I still am not caught up with how long it's been since you've been back here. I've been here. Man, uh, what, what's today? Like March nineteenth. Yeah, the eighteenth. Eighteenth. Yeah. Right, then um, I think I might have been here like maybe a week, eight days or something like that by now. Maybe March eleventh. Something like that. And you're just in Vegas. Or maybe I got back like March. No, yeah, I got back like March like seventh or eighth. So maybe I've been here like 10 days. Okay. Yeah. In Vegas. Seeing Vegas life. Yeah, I was in Vegas for like almost two months shooting a video and doing things and living that Vegas life. Yeah, it's different than this life. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, a, is it, a, would you say it's like a flip or like, because you, you mentioned how every, basically everything other than being here is kind of a distraction. Yeah, in a lot of, yeah. Yeah, and then like in your purpose at least, you know what I mean. And it's like kind of that's the only way you can really be here is if you're in your purpose, really. Like if you're fully, like to be fully present, you got to be like within your purpose. And is it a point? Do you think it's important to get all, like get distracted? Do you think it's essential to get distracted to get back to the purpose even more? Or do you think it's this just? I mean, I guess you could get distracted just to uh, investigate what dis- distraction is and being distraction is, but then it's kind of like that Ecclesiastes passage when uh, King David, he was saying, he was like, yeah, you know, I went and did this and did that thing and did this thing and saw what I could do. And he was like, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. <laughs> and I'm like, ah. Oh. So it's like, you know, a lot of times it's like, you already know that it's going to burn or that the, you know, it's going to cut you, but you can still do it anyway. Yeah, just spending crazy, stupid money. Yeah, no, the amount of money getting spent, man, in Vegas. People are oblivious. It's insane, man. And these strip clubs, yo, you know what I mean? Because all I'm, all I'm talking to are strippers. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not talking to nobody really other than strippers. And the, the, the things that they're, you know what I mean? It's a real look. Yeah. It's a real look at, like, what's going on there. Yeah, the things that they're pulling in are, like, in a, like it's just on a common night. You're just like, man, there's somebody in the club, really? Like, this is, like, sanctioned stealing almost. And you and I'm and I'm look these girls y'all might as well go get that money because these dudes are idiots and they might you might as well get that money. And I don't know, that shit is crazy. I I don't care. Even if I had a billion dollars, I would never go to the strip club. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I wouldn't. No, nah, only way I'm going to strip club is my like, yo, it's my birthday, man. You come, you know what I mean? We doing this thing. Other than that, man, and I still probably wouldn't do that now. Just no, my but life. but people <laughs> go. They save up to go throw a lot of money there. Cause that's the nature of Vegas, yeah. yeah. And like, you got to spend money all the time while you're there. That point of attraction is is garbage. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, it's not that strippers aren't uh, capable, and that the people in there aren't capable. It's just that that point of attraction, meeting it from that point of attraction, is like, oh man, we're already everybody's just like spiritually decapitated in this motherfucker. And that's in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I don't. Know. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like you're meeting like. Uh, at a fucking ballet recital or something. No. I mean, you mean that, that shit. No, nah, man. And but then you go to the mountaintop. The contrast <laughs> between like where could, where people could be. I feel like it's it's like important. I like to investigate. Like it's been a while being in Los Angeles for like a few months. You know, just seeing how hard people have to work in general. Like the pace of life yeah. is insane. Most people have multiple jobs. They need to just to pay for the rent. But yeah, it's always it's been frustrating this whole time when people need to pay like rent is higher than <laughs> they everyone's getting paid. And so people are just getting locked into these systems. And that's the next thing I wanted to talk about was just like um like just how the food, the caloric food ties into that. Like the caloric paradigm food. Like people being so overly charged or overly taxed on how much energy they have because they're giving it all to work. To pay to be there, and then on top of that, eating a food that keeps them locked into like a really crazy paradigm. Yeah, I mean, people just staying overstimulated and then uh, forcing themselves to do things that the body would naturally do if it was, you know, in a more natural environment and um, moving with in accord to nature. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's not. 
it's just totally it's just totally different but then if you if you only experience that it's just like an animal that never experienced you know naturalness uh, yeah, liberation yeah so it was you know it can't you know they can't even go out like the dolphins and stuff or whatever if they get uh if they get out at sea world i heard that they got out of, after katrina i heard a bunch of dolphins and stuff got out or oh. whatever and then they just came back yeah. they just couldn't they didn't know i mean they didn't know how to be out in the wild and that's how I feel like why people need laws, like, or or artificial laws, you know, like depending on artificial laws, artificial intelligence, like not having any sense of natural rightness, then having someone to stand in to say what's right, and the confusion that's happening because of that, and then the emotional, the emotional behavior, constant, is like yeah, and then everybody around you validates it, and it's like it's like. You know, you do some uh, you do some shit that's like uh, questionable, and then it's a bunch of questionable motherfuckers around you at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. And everybody sanctions it. You know what I mean? As far as like you know, diet and stuff like that. Yeah. Or anything, even you know, other things too. But definitely, you know what I mean, as far as diet, I feel like it's, it's people be really. It's not like there's anybody around you supporting. Uh, you know, healthy decisions really like you know it's and not. They're being taken off the shelves at Whole Foods. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm seeing, I'm seeing, yeah. like I'm really seeing it disappear in real time. Like just more, it's just to confuse yeah, you people's LA, diet. So you really see certain things too. Yeah, and I just over, just gradually this past few months, like the push to just make sure people really obey. Like, and and if anything, it's everybody. What's going on is probably seventy percent right now of businesses you walk into, you don't need a mask. Okay. Yeah. No one gives a fuck. Yeah. Like vax or unvax, like no one cares. Everyone's happy to just not have masks anymore. Cause yeah. last week there was some sort of like, it was some official rule to where now the place that I was working at previously people walk in, we had like, I don't, I'm never going to say anything, but someone's always going to say, Hey, you got to put that on. But now as of a couple of weeks ago, nah, you don't have to do it no more, yeah, no. Nah. And that's every, that's in a lot of places that's like 70% of places, 80% of places, whole foods, any restaurant, you don't need a mask. No one's gonna tell you to put it on anymore. That's good to hear. Yeah, it's really good to hear. And like to, to go in and feels great. So a lot even when you're working. Like I'm I'm in a in a position at the place, or I was in a position at the place I was working at to where I need the mask, but other people like cashiers, whatever, they, they don't need it. <laughs> like so people it felt good the first few days, like if people had, had enough balls to just like not do it. Face a few people just being like ah. but now yeah, definitely everyone's doing it. And now you, only if you go on the bus or the train. It's that the bus or the metro, you still have to put on the mask. Like that attitude is still being like reached oh, at yeah, through yeah, yeah. through like whatever institutional things that are like there. And there's a lot of yeah, yeah. But the people, it's just inevitable. Like no one's gonna fucking wear a mask anymore. <laughs> and I feel like that that's kind of how it starts. I feel like just people not wearing it anymore. People are just gonna just go back to their privilege. And I and I love that concept of snapping back, like the false alarm. And then after the false alarm, people go even harder back to what they were doing before, you know, they're kind of doubling down. And it, yeah, all the money and all the privilege, people have nice lives. People have nice families, you know, they're like they, they love their shit. But yeah, I don't know what, like, I don't know. I really don't know as far as like the strangleholds that they can get on the, on a large group of people, which is mainly the homeless. Like the people don't, don't have homes and this is the psychology of it. Like I said it last night, just, they want to break your back if people have a weak spine and they can't even sit up like i just see people just yeah. with, with, they're just yeah. completely down and then it's just so now they're completely dependent on a lot, whatever type of behavior like and, and it's just camps on camps tents on tents you know people still out there on skid row <laughs> like, like yeah, skid row is real shit man i don't know that's a it's a weird place man i don't know it's real Real, she gets real strange down there. Well, everyone's everyone's together somehow still. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess you got to be down in that. I mean, it's kind of like that even like in a lot of the other cities in California too, man. California got a lot of areas where there's like large populations of homeless people, and they just you know collect in like parks or in uh, behind certain uh, areas where I guess they can get resources or something. Well, it's just warm enough. Yeah. I think it's just because it's warm enough yeah, where they can, enough, yeah. yeah, they can be around and the parasites just there. Yeah, year round. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but now I don't, like my, even I'm thinking because I'm seeing so many times, like I can't verify, I need to even like go and like verify so many things about 
the correlation between when the sky gets sprayed and then when it's just overcast and the clouds don't look natural. <laughs> like, like, like I, and I feel like there's specific dates or spans of days that they really can just control the weather and control everyone's emotions when they're so used to sunniness and then they can kind of rain out the streets. But I can't imagine it rained a few times this past few months where I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, no, like, I bet, man. But I don't you know. You see it up here. I guess like <clears throat> they got days that are more intense than other days. And then, you know, it, it rains a lot up here, though. So it, I guess it, it's hard to keep them shits in the in the air. Yeah. But down there, the air quality is awful. Like, I yeah. feel like even last night, I'm coming, like, breathing. I feel like I felt like in, if it was like a tree root system of my nervous system, just kind of like in my body, I feel like overlaid on it. There's like metal or something <laughs> and it hurt. <laughs> and I'm just de- I'm just like, I'm like dealing with it for like an hour and a half, maybe like. <laughs> you kind of saw me down like my, I physically felt awful that I know I've been breathing terrible quality air like constantly oh yeah yeah like down in, yeah, in cities yeah like in in downtown LA like in the heart of it like I, there's specific areas when I'm riding through riding my bike like no way I'm not taking a breath it smells <laughs> like, yeah. but, but, but that's why I definitely go do the breath work at the beach in Santa Monica's night like Santa Monica and whatever areas yeah to get it's, the, all, it's all the breeze. ocean area yeah, yeah. And that's where I can breathe. But as far as, like, I can't, like, I'm going to do some, like, tones and some level of, like, manual nervous system control with breathing in the city. But I can't, <laughs> like, I kind of have to hold my breath. <laughs> like, yeah, no, yeah. like, like, and so even the lifestyle and kind of eating, uncon- like, to just keep myself in an unconscious enough state to where I'm not totally awake to how much, <laughs> like. Yeah, you're right. They, you <laughs> like, like, make parts of you go dormant. Yeah. Because it's just going to be lit up all the time. You're going to be bothered. Constant noise. And that's why. So I got to just put as many buffers as I can. But it's just constant static. Constant frequencies. Like I need a grounding device at least. I think a grounding device is cool. A grounding device and an eye fold. I think that's all I really need at, the, at this point. Like just in a city. Like I'm good. Yeah, I guess, I guess you had to um, go down there and see it. So that. You could see it. I don't know. No, it's important. No, it's like <laughs> like I always want to go to LA, and it's more of like <laughs> the deeper aspect is like, yo, the the bullshit dream. Like I swear, South Park did it too. Like they really put that in people's mind. Like in two thousand five, with that episode with all the homeless people going to California. Oh, yeah, yeah, they treat their bums right. Yeah, yeah, man. And yeah. just but even all these things in Hollywood and what I saw <laughs> on TV to make me feel like if I go to las vegas or not las vegas but i go to los angeles then i then i can make it with music and i've been like really networking with people really just getting into getting having photo shoots yeah. go and talk, like spending my money in the studio and like yeah. and talking to people i need to talk to because it's a great space for that like the place i'm at is like 30 minutes from the studio of the guy who i broke my foot to see in denver you know like yeah. a couple of years ago and you're in la man I mean, everything's there. people in la man yeah yeah, so that's why I'm like, that's what keeps me there. Like, oh, I really got to just focus on maintaining my energy <laughs> and getting my energy in, 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 a, in, a, in a place where I can make the moves that I need to at the times that I need to. And it's a lot of, like, waiting, <laughs> like, waiting around for checks. <laughs> you know, you know and, and I'm like, but then I feel the time, you know, the knowledge. And that shit just, it just, it just compounds, just supplements everything I'm doing. To where it's inevitable, the success, but I got to, like, see how many places that I've really been fucking up with my beliefs. and Like, why I'm, you know, yeah, it's, I, that's why I'm afraid to talk. Like, going into Pharaoh's work, even talking about high English. <laughs> you oh, yeah, know, yeah. I like to, for, for me to even talk and th- or do things in the way my I'm not speaking in a way to where my diction is on point. A lot of out of control, I could tell, like, looking at older videos that we had here yeah i don't want it up anymore yeah. <laughs> i got because i'm like man i'm not in control of myself still i'm not controlling my dreams still yeah I'm, I'm running around like i feel like i'm in like i have a genius i have a certain level of genius that i came here with already that makes sure that i'm not gonna yeah. fuck this up i can't yeah. <laughs> it's like but still yeah no i mean that's what he was telling me too like he was just like yo years ago like you know like a decade ago 11 years ago or something he was like, yeah, man, you got to learn your own language first fully. You know, you should get a high English book or whatever. They're not, you're not going to find that um, just like anywhere. You probably have to go to a library or like, you know, some type of book depository that, you know, at a univer- university or something that uh, 
where you have to go in person and sign in and try to get the book or whatever. You might not even be able to take it. You have to sit there and read it in there. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. No, man, it makes sense too. Yeah, and and um, and so he, uh, he, I was like asking him about that. He was like, "You probably don't have any luck with that now." You know, eleven years later, there's not enough time. I, I was feel trying. Like... Even then, though, I was trying. I couldn't find places that had high English books. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it was. I don't know. Plus, well, the places that I had, I could reach out and just get at my leisure. Everything else would probably. I don't know. I wouldn't. Even, I couldn't even find nothing really. It's hard to even search for. <laughs> yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah, like yeah, because it's just like it's like slave level English that we speak now, and then it's like the priest class and noblemen's and kings class is like the high English, you know. And that that how that deals with consciousness. Yeah, you have your whole approach. Like yeah, you say addiction. Yeah, you, and then dreaming, <laughs> like yeah. dreams too. That's what he was telling me. He's like, you know, since you can't get high English, you know, you should just start. You, you, since you got some, you've been acquainted with some Spanish over the years, and you know, did, did a lot of etymology. You know, you should be able to, uh, you know, just focus on Latin and declutter your dreams with that. Learning Latin, like talking to myself in Latin. Yeah. Instead of English, just slave English. I feel like that's next. <laughs> like, yeah. what, what, once, once it's time to transition. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like, um, I, yeah, I got to surround myself with a bunch of books, uh, to, you know, I mean, just to, to digest as uh, as the days go, because uh, I got to be ready for just being booted offline or anything, you know. So one way or another, I want to keep my sanity, and, and uh, I got a bunch of books like ready for it. if it goes down, if people get you know separated, or isolated, to where you can't really move, and gas is fifteen dollars a gallon or some dumb shit, twelve dollars a gallon or something. Yeah. Then. I'm like, well, I'll sit here and read all 800 of these books I got. Then, <laughs> been waiting for this. It's yeah. important, man, to mm-hmm. have that home library in that specific yeah. instance. I feel like we're kind of slipping up as long if we don't have that shit to go to. Yeah, for sure, man. I really do feel like uh, we got a thousand days and we got to make them count. And um, yeah, like everybody got to pretty much build their communities, their relative communities, and start making their way away from. The cities, because it's just gonna be impossible. The bondage. It's gonna like be impossible to live without so we have without bondage. Like, like the emotional attachment to that lifestyle yeah. to get out of that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I think I think we got about seven hundred days until the complete collapse of the dollar as the world reserve currency, <clears throat> where it's no longer. It's about sixty two percent of the world's reserve currency right now. Once that. Goes be, you know below fifty percent. Uh, I think it'll be a run on the dollar in about seven, and somewhere within the next seven hundred days, and um, and everything will try to find equilibrium. You know, it's going to be a lot of uh, supply chain shortages for different things, random things. They're going to probably blame it on Ukraine or whatever, but they know it's a lot of it's just printing massive amounts of money. They printed like seventy five percent of the money ever in the last like. Uh, four and a half years i saw a funny meme Mm -hmm. just about bitcoin like people always hitting on bitcoin and the value of it but then they'd show the value of the dollar on a graph oh to value the the bitcoin the value yeah (laughs) like the just the value of a dollar is just Oh, it's yeah, just yeah. gone down yeah, like a yeah. terrible stock. Yeah, no, for sure, yeah. <laughs> like it's just it's crazy just that it's just like what what's gonna happen once the dollar is no longer the measuring stick I mean, because you know Saudi Arabia said that they might they're gonna, they're gonna end the petrodollar and start taking yuan. So would yuan be the world reserve currency or? Okay. You know what I mean? And and then, but probably not. I don't know. They probably would have. A, I think they're gonna. You know, China already is developing their own crypto, so I, it it would probably be some type of yuan coin or something. It'd be through it, like delicate government like <laughs> process, right? I, I'm just assuming that the way they would do it is that like everybody that's on Social Security would get uh all their social security and crypto yeah you know and they would just have a card and it would just pretty seem be seamless for them and then if gas is 15 dollars a gallon you can't have a car yeah but it'll it's be, like a status thing yeah, kind of, yeah <laughs> like, it'll be like a lot of uh you know the autonomous vehicles and carpools and stuff like that people doing whatever they can to try to get around that but because um, people who are rich they just drive around like yeah some people still just they, they, have they money would just to do, do it they yeah. would just keep doing that and they kind of make it thing and society kind of separated people yeah. like who could have vehicles or like i don't know yeah you know what I mean? who, who, especially if you're driving alone you're not driving with other people in, in your car with you and not crazy carpool they'd be like what are you doing no, no, no. Right, you, it's so luxurious 
It's like, you know, and people would like lean it. They wouldn't give a fuck. Some people wouldn't care. I feel like, <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. No, I mean, it's just inflation, man. It's just inflation. Cause you can't keep printing the dollar like that, but they want to break the system now. And I don't know, like they, they want to crack. They want to have control over all digital assets now too. They want to, they want to use every uh, department of the, uh, the federal government to focus on digital assets. It's like some executive order just got passed like a few days ago. So control digital assets, control transportation, transportation. Yeah. And then yeah, people are stuck. Like <laughs> if so, if something were to happen, at first is yeah, some. Yeah, I think it. Um, after after the uh, it's just gonna have to find equilibrium because once the Bitcoin is no longer, like once the dollar is going gone, what do you value the Bitcoin in? You know what I mean? Or any of the cryptos like. Do you just bait, like what is now? It's like a magical number that just gets created off of, I guess whatever, the Bitcoin situation is mathematically at that moment. You know, like I guess that sets the market. I don't know. I need to know more about it. I feel like I still need to study more about like how. You know how what I mean? Because like because like once the dollar is worthless, then how do you value Bitcoin? You'd be like, yeah, the, the a Bitcoin is because you use your Bitcoin to have dollars. Yeah. So yeah. It's yeah. Like, if you have a if you have a you know, if you have a Bitcoin and it's a, and one Bitcoin's a billion worth a billion dollars, but dollars are worthless. People people will learn what real value is. And yeah, definitely start having equilibrium. Seats. Everything will yeah. find equilibrium in the market. I, I mean, like it would find the true value of everything would rise. Yeah, and then and then the the need to make sure everyone's okay. <laughs> like, yeah, just I feel like people. Yeah, people are gonna definitely have to get down to the more uh, necessities than uh, luxuries and uh, decadence. For uh, to endure, if they want to have any, uh, uh, you know, any self awareness <laughs> through through uh, once they leave this body, and the biggest obstacle is mental. Do you feel like, or am I just kind of separating the system? Um, I but, get yeah, some level yeah, the body's just gonna follow. You know, you well, got you got the body. You kind of got to get exposed to certain things. Like I imagine change your mentality. Like if you just rip someone out of the lifestyle, of their decadent behavior and what they usually engage in and then you stick them in a day or like a week of like okay this is what you need <laughs> the problem is meant it's like to get through that the hurdles to process psychologically <laughs> like that that just it just seems like the biggest obstacle yeah i mean it's just crazy for people like they like to just tell people like you've been doing everything wrong or a lot of things most of your life wrong for a lot like all your life or most of your life all your life and then it's like, but if it's not like you should be, you know, mad about that. It's like if, once you get it, once you get the formula for, you know, what's correct or whatever, the likeness of your God self, then you got it forever. It's not like you should feel bad about having done it wrong. It's like you need to know that you have been doing certain things wrong. You know what I mean? And then that's it. Well, that's that's what they want. But they wouldn't if you don't know why you want it. You know, like wanting wanting to get to that point of knowing the God self. Like I feel like. If there's no, uh, that's what the distraction's about. <laughs> like, that? to distract people from getting to the point where they would even know what they want. You know, it's just like, it's just constant want with all the distraction. Or no, or to the distraction to know why they want what they want. You know? Yeah, people would like to go to go the extra mile to be like, why do I want this right now? Yeah. Yeah. And then instead and, of just wanting, like, why would I want to be the God self? <laughs> you yeah, know, I feel yeah. like if people never get led to that, <laughs> yeah, that, it's like that, if you've experienced it, then you can value it. It's like if once, uh, once you have, uh, once you have the real, you can't tolerate the plastic or whatever. You know, however you look at it, once you had, you know, you, whatever is real, you can't go back. But from the plastic perspective, the real seems poisonous. It feels like poison, but it's really medicine. Yeah, yeah, yeah because it's it's going to push all the poison out. Yeah. First, that's the whole process. Cause that's what it felt like last night with metals. <laughs> like if it was metals, or just some feeling, some emotional thing in the nervous system, like yeah. getting pushed out, like whatever has been lingering, <laughs> but I've been breathing. Yeah. It's still like it's gonna have to come out in the sludge in my pee. Shit. Like. I don't know, man. Okay. Worm moon, man. You know, it's a, just be some uh, mucus. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. This is something. Yeah, literally. But it feels. It definitely feels like connected to the environment I've been in for the past like. Yeah, you know, for a minute. I don't know. I really don't know. That's why it's like to be sensitive and to to get like totally in touch with my body. I feel like even then it's just like it was an adjustment. Like it like the first b- 
before before COVID hit, I don't get sick. I know this. I know why. I know why and why I don't. Like I mean the the epigenetics, real like getting the science on like you know, plus the placebo effect. But you know to make groundbreaking progress in my own self to be like okay, I don't need to get sick. So right before COVID hits, I feel like oh this, like I, I I'm getting I'm like oh man I'm starting. No, I'm not gonna let myself think. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> like I'm not gonna no. say I'm getting sick. I refuse. <laughs> I really refuse. But to just sit with that feeling of like ah, I'm already making adjustments. I'm already you know I feel like it's just a, I'm getting an update on how how I'm like really not just I'm still not being in my body. I'm still not like there's some some reality in my body already that's just like ping that I'm not like, and then I kind of adjust to it. I settle into it. And I feel more like I, I don't. I don't feel the pain anymore. Yeah. You know, I yeah. feel like people, instead, instead of saying, oh, I'm sick, <laughs> and then just kind of let it, <laughs> like, oh, how yeah. do I, how do I just, de- how do I kind of like comfortably sit with it to where I make it through this in a way to where I totally adjusted internally the entire time. Like I didn't, yeah. it, it was some, it was an attack. It seemed, it seemed like it was some sort of, some sort of attack. Yeah. So much, of, you know? yeah, so much yeah. of it is addiction. Like, you know, saying I'm sick is like saying I, I'm diabetes. I'm cancer. Well, and it was never, it never got that intense, but then a couple, I think it was a few days later, oh, COVID, you know, you know, or just, oh man, people are getting hit with COVID and things like this. And I don't know if that was, uh, these are psychic attacks, like spiritual psychic attacks that are actually real. It's kind of like whatever this like insidious energy that's building up and building up, building up, it kind of can get waves. It can kind of send out a wave of, of like, oh, shocking people with something, <laughs> I don't know, but I'm. That's why I me. Mean. I'm weaving webs. Um, sometimes I'll be thinking like it's just a collective of people. Like it happens in batches. I think like where you get a group of people that are all like kind of sabotaging themselves in some way, and they're like settling for like a more mediocre life somehow in some way, and and not just enduring like some type of uh, low period to to get back steady. Hmm. And I feel like. You know, that, that's pretty what, like, you know, like a, some areas, a batch of, like, a, a basket of souls just probably gets, like, a critical mass, like, of of, uh, of ignorance and ignoring their purpose. And and I feel like they just get sick relative to them. Because to me, like, I, you know, having experienced certain states of consciousness, every, it's all kind of sick, really. It's just, like, different degrees of sickness in a lot of ways, like, and it's, like, what can you really tolerate? And after you, like, sustain certain states... More and more, yeah, of like, yeah, or health or whatever, however, and it's just like you can't even tolerate uh, those other states of sickness. It's like I was saying, it's like kind of like a Wi Fi thing, like, I'm like kind of chained to an experience that I've had. I've experienced certain things in my consciousness where I'm kind of chained to that experience where I can't get too far from it. It's like a leash, it's like a fail safe in my body. Once I get too toxic, and my body just automatically goes into certain places. Like, fail safe. Yeah, and I go into a fast like innately, and there's nothing I can really do, and I bounce back, and it's just, it, it's like I, I should, you know, that makes the whole process less, way less graceful if I just force that whole shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of just like going through the yeah, integral way, you know what I mean? Gradually, just um, reducing and you know way 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 shit, you know, not uh, not taking on the toxicity and just. Uh, and basically writing a check that I'm going to have to cash later. That's what I, I like the first point I want to make when someone starts to think about fasting. Like it, it needs to be gradual. <laughs> like it's got to be gradual like over time like in and out. Yeah. Of 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 the rhythm. Of, you know. Yeah. You know of life uh, for sure. And it, it, once that's gone, like immediately, then they would relax. I <laughs> feel like they they yeah. they relax about the chat. Like it's yeah, it doesn't need it's it's a different type of challenge. I feel like immediately people are taking it a crazy way to where they think it's this like pervert challenge, just this perverse challenge when it's really this natural progression. Yeah, and then like once then you figure out which periods in the year where your body just naturally goes into cleansing periods, and then you just uh, jump on that momentum at you know as it's happening or before it's happening, and then you can extend those runs. And then you just change your lifestyle more and more gradually. And then those runs just get longer and longer. And then the ends just start to meet, you know, you fucking, you, you make a, you have, you make a six month run to the next cleansing period. And then you just keep going on to the next cleansing period. And then now your equilibrium is totally different than it would have been if, you know, you just kept going in a destructive way. And you know why you want to get to ultimate health. 
in the grand scheme, yeah. and that's yeah. what that's what it takes you through that type that you you know that type of discipline. Yeah, man, it's like something you've experienced. You know, it's what you come from, really. I guess ultimately, like like uh, clarity of consciousness is what everybody is or comes from. Like you know, just clear consciousness. And um, I keep forgetting. Yeah. To use the word originator, I feel like people don't use the word originator for creator as much oh, yeah, yeah. As, as we could be. But I don't know. Is that is that a fitting term? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, creator man, like Pharaoh was saying, is like burning, like cre. It's creator or creation. Crete. Crete. Yeah. So, I mean, it probably would be better to say it another way. The origin. channeling. Uh. Well, but the word origin, you don't. You don't feel like it's like the best. Like, I'm not gonna say best, but still, it feels like it feels right as far as like the what is the origin? Originator works. Yeah, the originator. Yeah, like people works. aren't people aren't using God. Like instead of God, you can use originator, and it just it makes <laughs> like it makes the yeah, most. It works. Yeah. 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 It's functional. Yeah, I'll be going with it for a minute, but yeah, man. But yeah, original like a ori- yeah. So get into original thought things like that. Um, the old, yeah, not being connected to that. Like that feels like that chain that the chandelier doesn't have to where it crashed and now people on the floor. Like I've had, you know. Yeah. Like you just, yeah. The people not, it's the invert, it's the inverted world and they're hanging down on like a, on a, uh, on some silks or something. Well, with no link to the origin that level of forgetfulness that's totally like this that there's <laughs> a fall and if it was if it was a chain link on above the chandelier to where it boom splat and i feel like that now we're looking at this like this we're splattered everywhere we're like we're shattered everywhere <laughs> like on, on living through these mirrors <laughs> and things like that but you know to yeah I, but that's like a, it's just a vision or, or yeah i'm still working on that idea metaphors this seems fitting and this whole world of order that exists like just here here in the oh there's a there's a, there, there's a place that exists that's in order oh yeah i mean i guess there's still order here you know i feel like it's just fail safes right i mean i feel like the parasites is just like people dropping the ball for like centuries and then they just like kick in and then they you know that, that just keeps happening and then in order to protect souls from to, like continuing to come through the cycle and getting honey potted, there's no more soul. They just souls just stop flowing through, you know, which Pharaoh said we're at now. You know what I mean? So it's like, I think it's just like a fail safe. Like, all right, no more souls come. It's just all mm-hmm. parasites now. And that's I, the concept of going to the realization of, we, oh, man, you can't leave here. You know, if it if like souls keep coming here and then be stuck here, like, OK, with everything that you have. Like the beliefs, of, <laughs> you know, yeah. that can't go back with you. Like if, if you want to get back to where you came from, you can't take, <laughs> you cannot take things. And so people are really stuck. They're going to get to the point like, oh, I'm thinking anybody like probably like after 2012, yo, it's probably just a being, yo. Like, I, you know what I mean? Any, any just, thing being born, yeah. it's just like a being, it's just like an astral being. It's not a human soul. It's just an astral being, you know, to party. Yeah, yeah. They came here to park. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was like, well, well I got in here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. like, you, you know, like Farrah was saying, you know, uh, every time you, you know, have sex with someone, like, you create, the process of creating a spirit happens because then that spirit amplifies into a, beho- a body that, you know what I mean, that you, you know, have the seed in the woman and then the, that, that spirit is, like, the breath for the body. And then, but if you, like, break this, the, the cycle, if you just fuck the chick, and then never go through the process of impregnating and that spirit's just like roaming and like circulating. Just like that's all that's where I got a bunch of those, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, be like that. Damn. Yeah. That's the that's the fu- this is the thing that's fucking with me now. It's like, man. Yeah. I'm definitely not trying to put my dick in that many bodies for the rest of my life. Really I'm trying to reduce You're the creating of, spirits. The number of bodies. Yeah. You're creating mad spirits. Yeah. It's like right around for you know, I damn. Yeah. That's 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 the crazy part, the unseen spirit world. Like in that, that's the next conversation. Because yeah, there's spirits and souls. Yeah, there's people who are spirits. 
and and I'm yeah. no, I'm still not clear about that. And yeah. I feel like am I like I and that fuck I'm not even thinking like that still. Yeah, it's, like, that's the that's the reflex, to, you yeah. know, to turn turn on myself. But still, yeah, the, the like uh, some people are just part of the uh, of original man originator, and um, some people are you know uh, fragments of that, fractals of that, like subspecies of human. You know what I mean? Some yeah. animals are and, humans, uh, like super species of animals, <laughs> <laughs> like 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 a subspecies. I'm saying. Oh, well, yeah, but then there also could be animals that are, like, <laughs> oh. part human. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you've heard, like, what people say, that apes are just other part, other things, other creatures from the Yakub experiment. Oh, uh, no, just, like, yeah. when the whole animal kingdom is, like, doing its thing, and that in the natural kingdom, like, there are, like, <laughs> like part human animals. But that's a, uh, that's, that's what I was saying, though. I was just saying, like, remember, because uh, Yakub, you know, the whole thing, they, you know, they grafted other genetics into man, Whoa. and then they crossed them. Like, that's why if you look at, like, Rothschild, his lip, his upper lip looked like a chimpanzee's lip, mm. you know? And, you know, so that's what they, they always say that, you know, as far as uh, Darwin and everything, they're like, they're like, oh, they evolved from apes and everything. Yeah, it's like, maybe, you know, not, motherfuckers not lying to you. Okay. You know, so, like, I think maybe Yakub had experiments, and then maybe some, maybe gorillas are just one of the fucking mutants from the experiment. Mm -hmm. And chimps and all of that are just mutants from the Yakub thing. Some things, you know what I mean? And, and then a lot of, a lot of uh, I guess, people that, or creatures that, you know, wouldn't have, that were maybe like two, like half and half, just like either never got bred with through selective breeding, mm. or maybe they got wiped out, you know what I mean? Mad different stuff. Like, mm. Farrell, Farrell be saying like a lot of deformities is actually like different different people, like people would have two different heads and all that. It was like more common at different times that people would have different, you know what I mean? More heads, more arms and all of that stuff. That's like, you know, like uh. it was just, it was just more common before. So now it's so recessive now that it comes through. It's just such a mutation. Every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. They're the mutants. Yeah. <laughs> the idea of like people being mutated. Like I, I'm for, for specific people who really want to know. But you can do that though. You can take uh, a, a foreign embryo, a foreign um, uh, genetics and inject it into the, a human embryo, into a human uh, egg. And make the chimera. Yeah. So That's... if you let it grow up, I mean, wouldn't it be something like that? Yeah. Like a fucking ape or a silverback or something? Like something like, you know, uh, they, they had these chip. different features. Yeah. But, I, but it is that simple. Look yeah. at the abominable snowman, right? And then they call, um, you know, suppose it white people, supposedly an abomination. And it's like, it's all red, like, like, like Farrell be saying, prima facie, like right in your face, like the abominable snowman, you know what I mean? It's this, this, uh, you know, person with hair on his back or whatever that, you know what I mean? Same thing with like, uh. Bigfoot and all that shit. Like I feel like it's, it's plenty. It's people on Earth now in Iraq or whatever. They got hair on their whole face. Yeah, you know I've I mean? seen that. I've yeah. seen that before. So it's like, who's to say what it could have been before? You know, shit got really. Everything got selectively bred out. Oh, a man. lot of stuff. You know, or they're just shaving constantly and stuff like that. You know, There's a lot of things unseen. I just haven't seen a lot of behavior. Like that. I keep going to the forests of Russia. I like imagining what's going on. Like. 500 years ago up until now like unchecked place unchecked places like in deep forests in russia <laughs> like how what could possibly be going on like as yeah. far as vampire behavior um, and, and, and it's like just that just the concept of vampire behavior and and uh yeah and you look in like vlad the impaler and stuff yeah or just whatever yeah. the fuck going on <laughs> when it's unchecked in the dark like just in in a dark place